This video is sponsored by Magellan TV. One evening in Harlem, Netherlands, Truus, a beautiful Dutch teenager, walked into a restaurant filled with SS officers while her sister, Freddie, waited outside. Once inside, the young woman approached the highest ranking officer and began flirting with him. As they became familiar, she coyly suggested they go into the woods for more privacy. Unbeknownst to the officer, he had just walked into a trap, as the two girls weren't ordinary. They were the Overstegen sisters, teenage Nazi hunters who had been training for missions like these from an early age. When the Nazis began their expansion across the continent, menacing the livelihoods and the very lives of the European people, they brought about the most fatal war in world history. But they also sparked the most noble and heroic sentiments and actions of the most unlikely heroes, ordinary people who rose to the circumstances. Plunge into the late summer of 1939 by streaming a two-part documentary from Magellan TV, The Invasion, The Outbreak of World War II, to trail the steps of the man who was directly responsible for the suffering of millions. Follow the chain of events that triggered the globe's worst misfortune, and how intolerance turned into hate, and hate into the strive to oppress entire ethnic groups. Take advantage of the special offer for Dark Docs fans and claim your one-month free trial. Learn about history and the military, but also about science and paranormal phenomena in the over 3,000 exclusive films in Magellan TV, and weekly fresh content. Tune in from any device by going directly to try.magellantv.com slash darkdocs, or click on the link in the description below. The Overstegans. Truce and Freddie Overstegen were born in 1923 and 1925, respectively, and grew up in an outspoken political household. Their parents, Jacob and Trantje, considered themselves communists and instilled a sense of justice into their two children from the very beginning. Even after their parents divorced, Trantje continued to teach her daughters the importance of helping others in times of need, and during the Spanish Civil War in 1936, Truce and Freddie sewed dolls for the children affected by the conflict. When Europe was on the brink of an upcoming Second World War, the Overstegens hid Jewish refugees fleeing from Germany and Amsterdam in their small home, forcing the girls to share a single mattress. It was no surprise then that when the Germans invaded the Netherlands in the spring of 1940, the girls, 14 and 16 at the time, joined their mother in their hometown's anti-Nazi resistance. Like many sisters close in age, Truce and Freddy did not always get along. Truce, the older of the two, was described as assertive, efficient, and dictatorial, a natural-born leader with a heart of gold. She loved to boss her younger sister around and didn't care about fashion or men her age. Freddy, on the other hand, was extroverted, independent, and very likable. Nevertheless, the sisters put their differences aside to work together against the Nazis. As the Germans continued to occupy the Netherlands, the sisters helped distribute the Trou, an illegal daily newspaper reporting on the brutal Nazi transgressions happening around Europe. One of the sisters would act as a lookout, while the other would stuff the pamphlets into the bags of strangers walking around the city. They sometimes even dared to paste the documents over Nazi announcements downtown. In 1941, when the Germans invaded the Soviet Union, Truce and Freddy placed a large banner over a government announcement as a tribute to the brave Russian people. This bold sign became famous around Harlem, and the sisters were proud of their sneaky joint labor. Their acts of defiance weren't just subversive, they were also highly dangerous. If Nazi or Dutch police had caught them, they would have faced the worst of consequences. A Serious Proposition Not long after the Russia endeavor, one of the top commanders of the Harlem Resistance Group showed up at the Overstegen home with a proposition for the sisters. Commander Franz van der Veel was putting together a special resistance group in Harlem, and he and his fellow teammates had taken notice of Truce and Freddy's intrepid activism. Still, this new organization would perform even more subversive, violent, and dangerous acts than just handing out illegal literature. If they joined, they would need to take weaponry training. As Vanderveel continued talking, the girls realized why they were particularly valuable to the Dutch cause. 
As young women, they would be underestimated by the Nazi police, and the sisters would be able to attack without raising any sort of suspicion. If they joined, the sisters could not breathe a word about their actions to anyone. The conversation then turned more serious when Vanderveel asked them a single question, quote, Do you think you could shoot someone? At only 14 and 16, the sisters were hesitant about answering. Freddie was the first to respond, and she said yes. Meanwhile, Trus was worried about attacking Germans that weren't Nazis. When Vanderveel assured her that they would make sure that any executions would only be against the Gestapo or blatant traitors, she seemed to oblige. After all, the streets were filled with Nazi soldiers, and they were running around on their motorcycles hunting for rule breakers. These were hardly ordinary times. As Trus and Freddy walked the commander to the door, he whispered that he needed an answer in two days. He also added a crucial element of the resistance. Once they were in, there would be no turning back. The young women eventually agreed. The Harlem Resistance For a time, Truce and Freddy were the only two women among the seven members of the rebellion team known as the Harlem Council of Resistance. Soon after joining, the sisters went through a crash course on sabotage and weaponry, learning how to rig railways and bridges with dynamite to cut off travel paths, how to correctly fire a weapon, and how to roam the streets undetected through an area filled with Nazi soldiers. Their appearance would prove an invaluable weapon, as both Truce and Freddy looked younger than they were, and Freddy seemed as young as twelve when she styled her hair in braids. The Nazis didn't notice the two sisters when they rode their bicycles around Harlem. Thus, they were used as secret couriers and transported important paperwork and weapons. From 1941 to 1943, the duo managed to burn down a Nazi warehouse, work as volunteers in a hospital, escort children and refugees to secure hiding spots, and procure false identifications for people who needed them. Still, their biggest challenge was yet to come. Teenage Nazi Hunters During one of their first missions, Truce entered a restaurant with her hair and makeup done and casually struck a conversation up with a high-ranking Stutzstaffel officer. After flirting with him all night, she suggested they go into the woods for more privacy. Once the duo was isolated, they bumped into a man who then shot him, and then they placed the body into a pre-dug hole. The Overstegen sisters would eventually graduate to shooting their own targets. Their favorite technique was riding a single bicycle together with Truce pedaling while young Freddy attacked from the back. They would also follow SS officers home and ambush them when their guard was down once inside their homes. Although they knew that this work was necessary, it was still difficult to carry it through. In a later interview, Freddy admitted that sometimes she would shoot a Nazi and then feel a strong, impulsive need to help him. The only mission the sisters ever refused to carry out was a plot to kidnap the children of senior Nazi officer Arthur Seuss Inquart. They did not want to harm actual children in any way. The Girl with the Red Hair In 1943, another woman joined them in the Harlem Council of Resistance. Her name was Yannette Johanna Hani Schaft, a 22-year-old law student who dropped out of university when she refused to pledge loyalty to Germany. Soon, the three girls became best friends, and for the next two years, the trio performed daring missions together in the name of freedom, working as a tightly coordinated unit for sabotage missions. Although at first the group went unnoticed by the Nazis, by 1945, Hanny had become a target due to her very recognizable long red hair. On April 17th, a group of Nazi soldiers apprehended her at a checkpoint when a guard noticed the red roots of her hair, which she had dyed dark to avoid detection. According to Lore, when her attacker failed to hit her in his first shot, her last words were, quote, I'm a better shot. Later Life The war ended only three weeks after Hani lost her life. And although they were now freed from the Nazis, the sisters were devastated over the loss of their friend. 
Despite the heartbreak, Trus and Freddy try to reincorporate into civilian life while still grappling from trauma and guilt over their actions. In a later interview, Trus admitted that they never enjoyed their operations. Quote, We did not feel it suited us. It never suits anybody, unless they are real criminals. In November of 1945, Truce married Pierre Menger. The couple had four children, the oldest of whom was named Hanny. She was a regular guest speaker at universities, where she talked about war, anti-Semitism, tolerance, and acceptance. She then went on to publish a book about her experiences during the Dutch occupation in 1982. Freddie also married and had children, but she threw herself into her artwork and sculpted several memorials in the name of their best friend. Then, in 1996, both sisters opened the National Hanny Shaft Foundation. Despite their outstanding bravery, the Dutch government overlooked the sisters for years, as Freddy once belonged to a communist youth group. However, Prime Minister Mark Rutte finally acknowledged the duo's courageous actions in 2014 and presented them with the Mobilization War Cross. It is unknown exactly how many Nazis the girls were able to attack, as both refused to discuss the matter later in life. Whenever she was asked about it, Freddy would simply respond with, quote, One should not ask a soldier any of that. Thank you for watching our Dark Docs video. Please let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see a specific story featured in a future video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest content.